Namato Ratana Tayasa, may I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening, everyone. So today is a Friday, the 16th of uh, October 2020. And this is Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. As usual, I'm here with you all. And thank you everyone for listening this online Dhamma talk. Hello Margaret, good evening. Hello Yvonne, good evening. So good evening to all. So days are getting darker and darker. Our lights are just uh, going away more and more so we are entering to the darkness and this darkness although it's coming we shouldn't be too depressed with it we have to realize that this is gonna change When I was uh, young, you know, at that time, occasionally we used to have uh, vehicles passed by from my village. And there is a one particular tractor often passes through our village. And uh, since being a very young, I wanted to try riding on that running tractor and then again didn't want to go far away otherwise you have to walk for an hour to get back to the center uh, to, to the village so middle of the running tractor we used to jump out and the tractor driver always shouts at us that why you are coming up it's too generous you shouldn't be doing these things you know like that but we teenagers and not teenagers young very you know children we never listen we felt it's like a, a fun fun to get on and uh, have a free ride But somehow, again, and I was you know, very fond of uh, the Chinese Kung Fu and was training a little bit at that time. And I had uh, this Chinese shoes, the black and then uh, rubber the floor. I used it so much that it cracked the hole in the bottom and um, that was the only shoes I had it and I never left it but on that day when I was riding with another my friend and uh, after probably uh, 10 minutes of a riding before it gets too far away from the village we decided to jump out and I completely forgot that my shoe my uh, shoe my right shoes are not perfect so as I jumped out it stuck on a tractor and I fell down from the tractor And I used my left hand to support me, but it was so painful, so painful. And uh, when I got back home, the pain was so terrible and I was frightened to tell my mom that if I tell her that I was riding this tractor and fall down from the tractor 
and broke my hand. He will be, she will be very ferocious and will be punished me. So I cried alone in my small corner of my place where nobody would see and it was very dark that corner that I was given to have a, uh, have a, my own place. Everybody passed and uh, everybody uh, went through uh, and I was silent and crying in my heart. I was so painful and I was, <clears throat> uh, I was very afraid and very afraid to tell my parents because of uh, may tell me off. And my hand was basically broken. On that night, I didn't have a, a lunch. Sorry, didn't have a, a dinner. Simply saying that I don't want to eat. And then uh, my mother wasn't convinced. So she came down to see me. And then what happened? And then I cried out loud. And showed my broken hand, left hand. And I realized uh, that my mother was so compassionate and so kindness and so kind. The, all the fear that I had, all the worries that I had before that suddenly changed. As soon as my mother saw me in pain, and in such a, a great uh, panic. So she simply said, why didn't tell her earlier? So she could have taken me to one of the, uh, one of the uh, local healer. So early morning, she took me to the uh, local healer and he did massage and he did you know, some form of uh, uh, fixing my hand. I was so painful. I was so crying. So painful. Yeah. But after that, the pain was gone but didn't fix it. But later I had to go to hospital and even the hospital after putting the plaster didn't heal. And later again, I had to go to this uh, traditional uh, massage and uh, oil and uh, uh, different sort of a uh, uh, medicine, the traditional medicine for another six, seven months. And after that, I feel okay. The story that I'm telling here is simply that sometimes we accept the troubles Sometimes we understand that I have done these things and accepting the troubles or problems, but we haven't fully understood it. We haven't fully recognized it or we haven't comprehended it completely, the consequences of that. The very moment when I expressed to my mother and when my mother with uh, uh, with such a caring and uh, such a uh, kindly offer the help. The whole of the, the pain and a half of or more than a half of it just gone. And my mother simply told me that it can be fixed. So this is what uh, we needed in our lives, that we all will face uh, different problems. We will all face uh, different disappointments and sufferings, and so called the dukkha. And it's inevitable, according to the Buddha's teachings, that once we are born, it's inevitable uh, to be getting old and sickness and death and disappointments and like that which I have said yesterday. And the first thing we have to do, as I explained yesterday, that 
acceptance of those but acceptance alone is not enough acceptance alone is not enough that I am having these problems I am having this suffering is not good enough we have to fully comprehend it fully uh, rightly understanding and fully able to understand and realize it completely and here realization of that is basically is anything that arises is subject to change anything that is born subject to decay and death disappearing is inevitable it's there certain like my hand when I had it for two years I didn't even think uh, that it will be back to normal but after comprehending on that after the thoroughly going through the medication finally it's cured but I haven't comprehended it properly yet but the very moment when I comprehend it uh, that that after going through the doctors and the healings process and sign and the physios finally it's healed so doesn't matter what problem you are facing in your life doesn't matter what problem you're going through never think that this is the end of the story it is end of the story because we haven't able to comprehend it but the very moment when we realize that and rightly well understood it then the rest of the world this solved the problem and in a, in terms of the the spiritual way of looking at it according to the buddha's teachings the, all the problems that we have is basically due to our attachment to our own self our attachment to the body our attachment to the feelings our attachment to the memories and the, our attachment to the way we think and the proliferate and the attachment is about our knowledge as I said yesterday we have the sense of my sense of a, a happiness and the sense of a permanent is there and this attachment to our own self that due to that we do not want to be getting old sick or a death and we, we want to be a permanent and we think that this life is so long and never ever thinking that this is going to end this is the main root cause of a problem that's why it's called panchupadhana khanda dukkha attachment to the five aggregates the uh, body feeling perception formation and our consciousness is the main root cause of all the problems and the rest of other things are just the uh, accessories a house is an accessory, the car is an accessory, people are accessories. The relationship that we developed from one to another is just the accessories to make our life better. But at the end of the day, they have to go. That's why I call it, we are living in a multiple world system. And somehow one or another, this multiple world will break it uh, it will definitely will break all remain is ourself and that reason it need to be understood that's why it's called utter deeper power may you be your own island may you be your own light so with this, the very moment when you understand that our main root cause of a problem is attachment to myself, attachment to my existence, attachment to my perception, my identities, 
then what happens is that we will be able to okay let it be let it go and similarly whatever we come to contact with again if we are very careful enough we will be realizing that whatever we see immediately we normally used to define into liking and disliking a good or a bad there's no way that we do not you know, classify or define it in that way in that way and that form so whether we see objects or whether we hear of uh, where hear sounds etc then normally we tend to put our thoughts on that and we try and we tend to uh, identify from our own experiences and these all again builds up into a system so called as this is a permanent and think the things that i know is right but when we fully understand that these are temporarily conditioned arose and when we think about the condition again we will be able to realize that everything is made of four elements nothing more than that the major four elements the earth element the fire element the wind element and the water element some objects may have one element is greater than another others would have other elements greater than another but in overall we are all made of this four elements nothing more than that that's why it's conditioned arose and that is the reason why we have a flu why we have a sickness despite of looking after so well despite of taking care so well why do we get sick why do we get flu and that's simply because the whole nature or the whole cosmos is made of these four elements and when the environment change we are also part of that environment and we are so much related to the nature and these will affect to our elements within us and this imbalance or this rapid change on in this uh, elements causes a sickness or causes a flu and this is what we can apply in every other situation too even the disappointments so it's a simply environment changes and with that environment what environment changes here is the heat element changes and that heat element we simply changed it due to accepting that heat from someone else the negativities we just developed inside us as a form which causes a trouble to us someone says something long time ago and we keep it inside our brains for such a long time torturing us and that heat is always burning inside us the fire is burning and that that fire of negativities that someone has said that someone has done that's burning inside us like that so the whole four elements are always working in this way and this is what we need to understand the very moment when we understand that these are all uh, working in this way we will be able to let it be now remember it is not easy job remember that this is not easy work we will not be able to fully comprehend it until we attain so called the arhats 
the Aryans, noble ones in Buddhism. But having said that, doesn't mean that we cannot train ourselves. Basically, we are a trainer. We are training ourselves. We are training ourselves to be in that position. And that training begins with the realization of that problem as it is, as they are. And a second ability to comprehend it rightly in its full understanding, a realization of that problem properly, that where and how it is the problem. And the lastly is called, uh, has been fully understood. And this part is what we are working for. And it's not easy. But the very moment when you realize that part of fully, you know, has, you know, you have been, you have fully understood that, then there won't be any, then there won't be any problem. No one can make you angry. No one can make you disappointment. No one can make you, you know, unhappy. You will be able to be happy in every situation. You will be able to accept every environment without having mourning and grumbling. Oh, this is a horrible weather. Oh, this person is bad. This person is so nasty. This, that person is so bad, it's causing all the troubles and like that. We will be able to let it be. And rather than that, we can further we develop the kindness and compassion towards that person that he or she doesn't know the consequences of the work that they are doing. Because whatever action one has done, they are the heirs of the results. They will receive the results in any one form. And if they are causing a lot of trouble to anyone else, anybody else, the result will come back to them some way, somehow, and somewhere. One cannot be free from the results of any action one has done. There is a saying that there is no place to hide from the results of your deeds. So that's why with that, understanding the ignorance and their wrong action towards someone else and causing a trouble to someone else will feel this kindness and compassion generates towards that person. Oh, such a poor person doesn't understand the consequences that uh, he or she has to uh, face in the future. So with this, what happens is that after the realization of this, one becomes the Arahat, one becomes the Noble One, which is the highest state of the Noble Ones. And that is the state that a, a Buddha called himself the Buddha. And there are, in, in according to the Buddhism, there are eight different types of a noble stasis, noblehood stasis. But within that eight stasis, only the number eight, the category of number eight, are fully known as the Aryans, the one who has known or understood completely, or things that needs to be done, has done. So that's why do not be disappointed that Buddhism is so hard or the Buddha's teaching is so hard to comprehend. Do not be disappointed. This is all the road map that we need to work it out. And one after another, if we began to collect the points by knowing and recognizing and accepting and understanding it, Little by little, it's like uh, accumulating uh, merits throughout the time. And end of the day, these merits become a uh, hues, which will be reinforcing us or as a power or the, the force to be enlightened. So that's why never be disappointed and never give up practicing. 
and in our day-to-day -day life you know, do not think of a liberation you know, I never think of a liberation and even this life you know even I maybe go down to the hells you know I don't care but during this time I try my best to recognize and accept anything that happens and then try not to make it as a, a cause to make myself unhappy similarly when somebody does something against or disappoints me or causes troubles in that time again I watch my thoughts I watch my reactions and then you know rather than reacting to that person you know I think of that person as you know unknown he's in delusion he sees in deluded mind and anything that that person is doing is again you know uh, returning back to that person in the future so wish he will not get it in the future and he is happy or she is happy in that way so that's why it's a very important to practice little by little doesn't matter how little you do but continuously doing and practicing will help you to be free from it so be mindful of every action you do and be mindful of every speech that you speak and be mindful of your all the problems and the sufferings accept respect and let it be with this we will be free and we will be happy so thank you very much for listening everyone and uh, in a few moments time we're going to have a chanting and guided meditation you're most welcome to join with us until then good night may you all be well and happy may the buddha dhamma sangha bless you sadhu